Hey you guys, this is Bath Time Bakery's first soaping video. You get to watch me make our blueberry coffee soaps. I'll tell you right now, I made quite a few mistakes along the way, as in forgot the fragrance oil, so I have a batch of unscented soaps, and then I just made a second batch with scented soaps. Um, and I'll go ahead and talk about those and show you some of my struggles along the way, but I'm really happy about the end results. Thanks for watching. All right, so the lye water has been made. I'm gonna let that cool off. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and melt my butters and oils, but only the hard ones. So this one has palm oil, cocoa butter, and the coconut oil. I'm gonna add the olive oil and castor oil later. We are gonna grind some coffee because I'm running very low on the coffee ground, so I just decided to grind my whole bean coffee. And the coffee that I'm using is from Ohori's Coffee Roasters. They are th there are excuse me three locations in Santa Fe. Um, support this coffee business; they're fantastic. And I also have to give them major shout out for supporting my business and really blessing me with the opportunity to have some of my products sold in their wonderful stores. So you guys, if you're in Santa Fe, support them. And I would be more than honored if you also supported me. All right, this is ground enough for me. And I have to tell you, oh, the smell is so good. Since I'm going to be making 17 bars of soaps, I'll need 17 blueberries. And these blueberries here you see at the bottom, they're just way too pigmented. So I added more melt and pour and melted it all together. And as you can see, very pigmented still. So this was a good decision. I don't remember where I got the silicone mold from you guys, but I'm pretty sure it's Amazon. Either way, I'll make sure to list it down below in case you're interested, but it's a wonderful mold. I've used it several times and it has not failed me. So here I am just filling it up and I believe I made enough or melted enough MP to melt and pour soap to fill up the entire mold. So now we are revisiting the oils and butters that we melted earlier. And what we're gonna do, isn't that just mesmerizing? What we're gonna do is bring down that temperature. So right now it's 123.2 degrees Fahrenheit. We are going to go ahead and add olive oil and castor oil. And I didn't melt this previously or heat it up previously because it was already liquid at room temperature. And I find that when I melt the hard oil some butter and then I add whatever's at room temperature, it significantly helps me cool down the temperature. I prefer soaping below 110 degrees. In fact, I prefer soaping anywhere between 90 and 100 degrees. But today we're gonna be soaping just a little bit higher. All right, you guys, we have managed to decrease that temperature significantly. Now we're gonna go ahead and prep our colors. So going from right to left, that white color is titanium dioxide. In the center, we have blue mica, or bramble berry. And to the left is cocoa powder, high in antioxidants. And I'm mixing a tablespoon of the oils and butters you previously saw me mix with each color, and then I'm gonna go ahead and mix them. The cocoa powder and the blue mica, they mix easily into the oils. The titanium dioxide is a little bit more resistant. However, you'll see that I like to mix slash mash it to get rid of any clumps and avoid that from transferring to the soap. And I'm just spraying the spoon with rubbing alcohol and let's go ahead and mash that titanium dioxide. I apologize for it coming off a little bit more yellow. Um, in the video, the oils itself has a yellow base, but this is actually quite white. And I'm just smushing it, smushing it, smushing it, not worried about the sides so much because when I do pour it into the soap, I'm just working from whatever is in the center and whatever will easily pour. So that way I'm not really picking up the clumps. Okay, we're done with the prepping. Now it's time to mix the lye water and the butters. And I wanted to check the temperature. So the lye water is at 101. And as you'll see shortly, the melted butters are now at 107. So they are within 10 degrees of each other. So this is a decent temperature to start soaping at. I need to transfer all of this to a bigger bowl because I'm afraid it'll just be a little too tight in space after adding the lye water. 
All right, you guys, so I'm going to go ahead and add my lye water into my oils and butters. Let the soaping begin. So we're going to go ahead and mix all of this, but what I'm doing is just burping it or just doing that to get any air bubbles that are trapped underneath out. And we're just, we're going to go ahead and blend and we're going to blend until we get to trace. So I want to talk about my emotions as I am stick blending the soap. This process makes me nervous. Part of it is Cold process soap is unfamiliar territory to me, and I've made about seven hot process soaps, and this is my third cold process soap, so I'm just new to soaping in general. Um, I worry about false trace. I worry about stick blending it too much that kind of accelerates everything where my soap starts setting before I can put things away. So you're gonna see me here where I start short fusing and missing steps, and I'll talk about those steps as we progress. So now that it's emulsified, I'm going to go ahead and pour three different sections, or I want to have three different parts for the three different colors I'm using in the soap. The biggest one is going to be for the cocoa, the one on the far right. And in the center, I'm going to add the pretty blue mica color. And on the far left, I'm going to add the white. Now I'm making 52 ounces of soap or 52 ounces of oils in the soap recipe. The blue, I believe I partitioned 10 ounces. For the white, I partitioned 15 ounces. And then the remainder of the soap will be that brown color. And so as you can see, the mica just blends beautifully. It's one of my favorite things. The cocoa powder also blends beautifully, but here I start tripping you guys. And I blend it or mix it in partially because I wanted to get to the titanium dioxide feeling like, oh my God, my soap is going to set, it's setting. But titanium dioxide, at least in my experience so far, seems to accelerate things. It makes it set quicker, or at least it makes things thicker. Um, so I really should have just finished that brown, feel me. So I figured the quickest way to do this was just to go ahead and use the stick blender and I burped it out and the big bubble came out, thankfully. I was worried that it was maybe a little too thick for it to come out, but it came out and you can see it's blending quite nicely. And as you can see it blended beautifully I think that's such a beautiful color and I was relying on this color deepening during cure because of the fragrance oil which does have vanillin in it or vanillin in it I don't know how to say that and uh, but I didn't add any fragrance oil you guys and then look I go right into adding it here and then I realize oh shoot I didn't add the coffee crap didn't add the coffee oh my god so I pour it all back in, and so this is what's left after I poured it back into the container. And I'm stirring in now the coffee that I grinded earlier in this video. And I'm just hoping that it still turns out quite nice, but I was a little disappointed that I was forgetting that I forgot the coffee. And at this point, you guys, I didn't even realize I'd forgotten the fragrance oil. I don't realize I forget the fragrance oil until I'm done with everything. All right, you guys, so this is cold process soap number two in my life, and you can see I'm freaking out because it was coming out in thick clumps, which I already knew. I just know that about titanium dioxide, but I did not have anything in mind. I didn't want to do hanger swirls. I'm like, I will do drop swirls, and this is my second time doing drop swirl, but you can see, you guys, the color without the titanium is a little thinner, so I'm hoping that'll help break up some of those clumps that you see there, but freaking out, but we're going to proceed with the plan, okay? because that is what I had in mind and I just was not being flexible in that moment. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I am probably 
the messiest soaper on earth when I'm panicking and you can see the mess and at the same time though I hate the mess <laughs> so I'm trying to clean as I go along here you guys just just I'm just working through all kinds of feelings here All right, my anxiety is gone now that I'm actually done with this. I'm going to pat it, pat it, pat it just to get out any air bubbles. If they are going to come out, they would have come out there. And um, now I can take my time and decorate the tops of the soaps. And these are the blueberries that we made earlier. I took them out of the freezer and I'm just going to go ahead and decorate you guys. After I'm done with this, I'm going to sprinkle some gold environmental glitter on this or eco glitter. I'll make sure to put it below. This one is from Nurture Soap. Then I'm going to spray the heck out of it, you guys, with 99% rubbing alcohol. And that is to hopefully help prevent soda ash. And right when I was done with this, my husband walks up and says, whoa, babe, what is this? And it was my fragrance oil. So this right here is me pouring my fragrance oil. I decided to make a second batch. This is about an hour later because I wanted my lye water to cool and all that jazz. Um, and I, I did it right, you guys. I did it. I did it the right way. Yay! What a difference clarity of mind makes. I'm a lot less anxious here because I just did it. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go with the flow and so I was able to work at a much thinner trace here and get thinner drop swirls so I'm going to show you again some of this process for this second loaf of soap just so you can see the difference when I was working with thicker trace versus now thinner trace. And you guys can see here, right when I put the other soap, the one without fragrance next to it, the unfragranced soap is much lighter and then the darker soap. And I will tell you the next day when I go to cut the soaps, the soap with the fragrance oil has a lot more soda ash on it than the soap without. So I'm just kind of duly noting that and I'll make sure to keep an eye of that as I continue to soap more and more in the future. All right, you guys, so it's the very next day and it is time to unmold the soaps. Um, my soaps have been in the mold for just shy of 20 hours. This is the Brambleberry five pound um, loaf mold and liner. The liner itself holds 52 ounces of oils, you guys. I really like it. I know it has mediocre reviews online, but you can see literally this is me taking it out after sitting for 20 hours, unmolding my soaps. Um, it, it comes out really easy. I've used it about, well, now, I mean, when I made this video, it was my second time, but I've used it now four times. I really like it, you guys.
All right, so now it is time to cut the soaps. I've lined the berries um, with the soap cutter, so I should have nice even loaves, or excuse me, nice even bars. And one of the coolest things about this too is they all usually weigh the same, or just about the same. And here is the first bar that I removed, and I love the way it turned out. So this is the one where I forgot the fragrance oil and things were speeding up a little too fast for me and I was really concerned about how it was going to look. But I would call this a very beautiful mistake. Um, the natural scent or fragrance of the soap is just stunning. And the drop swirl patterns came out quite beautiful. I apologize for the brightness of the video. You guys will be able to see much better photographs of these soaps on Instagram at Bath Time Bakery LLC and also at the end of this video. So let's go on to the second batch that I made using the fragrance oil poured at thinner trays and you can really see the difference in pattern which was I, th I thought was cool to observe. Um, so here goes, you can see much thinner. And in the second, I'm going to show you another bar of soap I've made this soap three times now, two scented, one unscented. The one to the left is the first batch I made scent, um, scented, and it did not gel, versus the one on the right did gel. And at the end, I'm gonna show you a picture now after the soap has been cut for two days so you can see the gel soap Mommy. color is more vivid. Hold on, Mommy. Mommy. All right, so let's talk. So I've now made this soap, you guys, three times, and you see one soap from each batch here. The first soap you see was from my first batch. That one was made with fragrance oil, poured at very thin trays, and I put it in the freezer as soon as I was done making it. So it did not gel. The second soap made without fragrance oil, I don't expect the colors to change, and I poured it at thicker trays, so you see the difference in kind of the way the swirls look. They look like swirly blobs. And the third soap is made with fragrance oil, poured at thin trays, however, I left it out at room temperature and the soap gelled. So you can see the difference between the first and the second soap. The only difference was one was placed in the freezer, the other one was left out at room temperature. And all three versions are beautiful. This turned out to be a really fun, unexpected experiment. And I'm actually really happy that I didn't put the fragrance oil in the second batch. Even though unintentional, I'm glad I had the opportunity to do that because I got to learn that my soaps themselves smell wonderful without fragrance. So I will be making more unscented soaps. Um, you guys, thank you so much for watching. You can find me at Bath Time Bakery LLC on Instagram. You can also find me on Facebook. And feel free to sign up for my newsletters on my website, bathtimebakery.com.